my name is Ella. I've been playing oboe for about 18 months, I think. Um, I've also been playing with my PSO for two semesters. Um, I really enjoy playing with different music groups, and the oboe is actually a solo instrument. And so although it's, I mean, I play in a ton of different groups, but I, I play in jazz groups, I play with orchestras, um, but it's, the oboe has such a clear cutting sound that that's why it's often used as a solo instrument. Um, most people have actually heard the sound of the oboe, they just haven't put it directly with an instrument, so this is what an oboe looks like. Um, it, the instrument itself, it has four main parts. Um, so you first, you have the reed here, which is what makes the sound, it's kind of like a fun sound here, ready? <laughs> um, so the instrument then, there's the reed here, it then, this top part is called the upper joint, we have then the lower joint, and then we have the bell. So on beginner models, often the bell will just have two holes in it, and the main purpose of the bell is to be able to reach the oboe's lowest note, which is a B flat, so if you think on a piano, there's the middle C, the B flat is just directly below it. So that, with the holes, often the player is sitting down, they'll have to like pinch it between the knees, and that'll play the lowest note. We often don't play that low B flat very often, so that's why on beginner models, they often just don't have the key work for it. Um, the inside of an oboe is, it's hollow, it's a hollow instrument. The shape of that the inside looks like is a cone, actually. Um, unlike a clarinet, which is a cylinder, and so they, and so the inside they call it the bore of the instrument. So they'd say an oboe has a conical bore. This, unlike string instruments, these the oboe has a ton of key work. Um, there are 45 bits of key work here. I have, I think I counted, I have 25 pieces of stuff I can hit with my fingers. Um, in the instrument, we have places where you put your fingers, and then we have places, like I have my thumb hits these back keys here. There are also these pinky keys. I have eight different pinky keys, and then sides of my hands often will hit other keys too. So the pinky keys are for operating these lower tone holes, which are way down at the bottom here. So if I'm gonna play a note, then I can use these keys to go down lower. So that B flat is the lowest note. Uh, the range of the oboe is probably between two or three octaves. So if I play the note just above it, so that's a middle C, I can go up two octaves from that at least. So. C, so that's two octaves from the middle C, um, and then the oboe can go a little higher, so so that's a high E flat. We tend to just play in those middle two octaves. Um, most instruments, they, they aren't, the oboe itself, the flute often can go a lot higher, and so the flute often plays the higher notes, the oboe does not play as high as much. Um, but it will, it, the oboe, although it has a small range, um, it, there seems to not be a ton of problems with the oboe's smallish range. An interesting thing, unlike string instruments, the oboe can only play one note at a time. Um, there are a few special things where you can make some pretty ugly noises when more than one note is played. Um, but that's a cool thing about the oboe, so they, you can only play a few notes at a time. The reed itself is, well, it sounds kind of funny when you play it on your own. Um, but the reed itself, I don't know if you can see that here, but it's metal with a bit of cork on it. So that's what this part is here. And then there's thread. And then this wooden part here is, the, um, it is made of cane, so wood. And so the wood, because that's, this is what makes the sound. And because it's wood, it changes a lot with the weather. So often um, in the summer, because it's more humid um, and it's not so dry compared to the winter. In the summer, it, the pitch tends to be a lot flatter. Whereas in the winter when it's all dry, we often have to keep wetting the reed um, because it's wood and this is, it needs to vibrate. Um, the sound, also because it's wood, it can change a lot. And so depending on the days, like 
I had this read actually was two or three weeks ago and started playing and it was basically the worst read I'd ever had. It sounded absolutely dreadful. I hated it. I was like, okay, well, I'm just going to leave it for two weeks. I came back to it and now it's the best read I have and it's shocking how much reads can change. So that's another interesting thing. Um, the reads chip super easily. So when I first started playing, I went through quite a few reads, but reads can last quite a while if you take care of them. So I'm going to play um, the melody from Jupiter, which is one of the planets in Hulse's first suite, or not his first suite, but one of the pieces he wrote. So. Jupiter and one of Hulse's The Planets um, from his the movement Jupiter. Some challenges about the oboe is that it the when it takes a lot of air support is the short answer. Um, when we're going and when we're well, when we're playing, we can only blow through this tiny little hole if you look in the opening of the reed. I don't know if you can see that. So Unlike other instruments like flute, where it takes a lot of air, but you can also blow all that air out. Um, we have to have a ton of air support, but we can only blow it through a tiny hole. So although we have to blow a lot, only a little bit gets through. And so you have to have a lot of air pressure to be able to play. So if I just blow gently, it doesn't really make a sound. Whereas if I'm blowing really hard, it makes a sound that you want. And so, Often after going through a long concert, I get really tired. But so that's an off. That's an interesting thing about it. Um, the the tuning the instrument is almost impossible to play exactly in tune. Although that's kind of the same with the other instruments. Um, playing this, it's just it's it's really hard to tune because. When I play, I can I have a bit of a range of which in between in there it has to be in tune. So, so if you imagine the range almost like a bar graph, that somewhere in there is going to be what's in tune at 440. And so every note it's different, and every day it'll change. So during the spring, it's especially hard to stay in tune, and also in the fall too. But the weather's changing so much. Like this week, I didn't even know we were getting rain. Um, and last week it was really nice and also really cold and so whilst the temperature is constantly changing the reeds are constantly changing as well so the range I kind of already talked about that um, early versions of the oboe there were it was really hard to have semitones so if I play C but actually in between a C and a D there's a C sharp and so playing notes like that was really hard so early oboes the hobo originated, we think, in 17th century in France. Um, its predecessor was an instrument called the Chambre, which is dates back from, to about 2800 BC. Uh, the French term for the oboe is called the haute bois, also known as high wood or loud sound. That's really the translation for it. The oboe, or I actually got a chance to play a Baroque oboe, which is a really old type of oboe, um, but it looked much like a recorder. And so there were only two or three keys on it and so there was a like one peaky key I think on one side and another little key and that was really all there was and so as 
aside from there being no octave keys, in order to play another octave, you had to blow really hard and hope that the reed would suddenly jump up. And so sometimes you'd hear me playing and the reed will squeak. Um, that happens, it happens with clarinet players too, but it's the, the reed almost jumping up a bit. Um, so modern oboes now have far more key work. I mean, the only old ones just had two or three keys. Um, but it, now with the new key work and the modern style, you were able to play so many more notes. Um, actually early on, the French and the Germans both developed a different styles of oboe, but then the famous composer Richard Strauss said that he preferred the French oboe, and so therefore that version is normally used in orchestras today. So there are actually a few different members of the oboe family. So the oboe is what you normally would hear, but another common member of the oboe family is called the English horn. Um, it sounds a fifth below the concert oboe, so it's pitched in F. Um, it's a lot larger. Um, the bell itself, one thing that sets it apart is that it has an onion-shaped bell. So if you look up pictures of an English horn, um, not a French horn, that's a brass instrument, but the has a onion-shaped bell, and the reed itself is different, um, and it sits on what's called bocal, which is this metal tube that then this gets connected to, and often people wear um, a neck strap to hold the instrument as well. Um, a really famous English horn solo is in Dvorak's New World Symphony. Um, it's probably the most famous solo. Um, there is also the Oboe de More, also known as the Oboe of Love. This one is even rarer. It's in between the English horn and the oboe, and it's pitched in A, which is a minor third below the oboe, which is in C. Um, and this instrument, I was able, I was really lucky I was able to play one. They're pretty rare. Um, I can't think of any immediate solos I've heard of, but yeah, so that's pretty cool. Um, there's also a bass oboe, which is has a famous solo in one of the planets, but some famous oboe solos is Peter and the Wolf and the Duck, but there is also the Swan Lake solo, which I have the music for, so I'm gonna play. dry out and so, so I always often have a little cup of water it's my little cup um, and so yeah the reeds dry out a lot one of the biggest challenges about playing oboe is really down to the reed I have a couple of reeds actually right here um, that almost uh, reeds will crack at any moment so I've had some concerts where reeds have cracked, but it, so that's why I always often have a lot of reeds. Here's my reed case. Um, this can hold 20 reeds. Some people have cases that even hold 40 reeds, but it's really funny how sometimes you'll see concerts where the oboist will have a broken reed and then they'll quickly have to change it before playing their next part. Um, so yeah, probably the biggest challenge about the oboe really is the reed. It changes so much. Um, I have been playing for 18 months. I have a wonderful teacher. Um, but I want to show you a really quick thing. Um, this is one of the, this is the, one of the first of the 16 grand studies in this um, famous oboe book called the Barrett Oboe Method book. Um, but I'd like to play it for you. Now I'm still working on it, so there may be a few little spots, but I'm gonna try.
love the sound of the oboe and you want to hear some pieces, um, there's a couple, there's Mozart and Albanoni, both had two really common um, oboe pieces, so they're, they both did some amazing concertos, but there's also, if you're a Star Wars fan, um, in some of John Williams' music, there's some famous oboe solos in that. One thing I love about the oboe is how rewarding it is because of all its challenges when I push through and I able to do something like for why I had a problem with endurance. Because it took so much air when I first started playing, I could only play for about 15 minutes at a time because I got so tired. But I really, I don't think I'll ever get tired of it because there's so much to learn and so much is changing. So that's one of the reasons I love the oboe. Um, I encourage, even if you're playing an instrument yourself, to never give up. Um, there, I've certainly had tons of challenges when I was playing, but it is just so rewarding once you've pushed through and you've been able to play. So I highly encourage you that no matter what, to try to stick with what you're doing and find something you love. Thank you.